All right. So today we got a Sportster carb. Carburetor. Well, this is not my Sportster, but carburetors all work about the same. So we're going to talk about carburetors. So this is all. Of, this is the whole mechanism. Is this the intake right here, the manifold. Yep. So those usually when you see a carburetor oh, stuck, those usually won't be on there. Ah, oof, somebody glued it on. Anyway, we'll take the air cleaner off first. So here's the air cleaner. This keeps dirt from getting inside your carburetor, right? On old cars, those might be easier to see, the air cleaners. Yeah, so let's get this off. And when people say two jet, there should be two holes in here on this, this air cleaner Oh, spot. double barrels. Yeah, double yeah. barrels. This is a single barrel carburetor. Yep. A V-twin on the Sportster. Yeah, it's two cylinders, but it uses one carburetor. On the Honda we have, it uses four carburetors, one for each cylinder, right? Honda Nighthawk. Yep. So four there's, cylinder. There's a lot of different ways to accomplish this. I think most Harleys use a single carburetor, single barrel carburetor for two cylinders. Because that um, Nighthawk, I think, has as many cylinders as my mom's Civic. It's got four cylinders, yeah. Yep. All right, we'll take the air cleaner bracket off and get that out of our room. We don't need that. On Corvairs, they at least only use two. See if we can gently get this gasket off here, because I don't know if I have another one. Oop, probably not. I don't know if we're going to be able to save it. I guess I need a razor knife or something, right? Let's see if we can get that off of there. Might have another one in the box. Yeah. May have another one in the box. We'll see. Up the way. Got smooshed in there pretty good. Someone really hulked that down, didn't they? Yeah, I don't know if we're going to be able to save this. We're going to have to get a new gasket. Anyway, we'll talk about how carburetors work. And we'll see if we can figure out what's wrong with this one. What's happening, this one would run, but only if the carburetor was on choke. So okay. this is your choke butterfly right here. Yeah. And what would happen is as long as that was closed, like that, it yeah. would run. That's it. And as soon as you release the choke, it'd die. Same thing happened with the Honda Nighthawk. Well, yeah, that's because it's got bad gas in it. Yeah. The reason this did it, though, is because it's not getting all the jets working. Yeah. So what's happening is it's running, and this is blocking off all the air, so it's getting just enough fuel to idle, and then when you release this, the other jets start working and it don't work. And we'll talk about how the jets work and where they are. Okay? Yeah. So let's get her open. We'll do a good job. I'm not an expert on this, but we'll try to figure out, explain it as good as we can. I don't know who gooped that. Will the crowbar help? I might need to pry it off. I'm not sure. That was when I took it to the motorcycle shop, they gooped that. I didn't have that goop last time. The Honda Nighthawk is just, that's just crazy. At least on the Corvairs, they use two, like I said. One for each bay of cylinders. But four, it's just crazy. Well, there's a lot of ways to approach it. Now, I'm not sure. When I took it to the motorcycle shop, I think because it was running rich, or you know, the only running on the choke, I think they thought this was leaking. And I think their answer to make it stop leaking was to just glue it. But oh, they could have done without that, right? Yeah, silicone doesn't always help people. Yeah. JB Wells. Well, it would have sealed up because a lot of times if it's running like that, usually it'll run a little too lean. That means air is getting through here. So I think they glued it thinking maybe air was escaping here. And there's two gaskets that fit here too on these to hold it. And I think they were thinking it had an air leak. But we'll see if we can figure out what's wrong with the carburetor. If you're, if you're in my need world, a new gasket there. the only place Colf works to stop a leak is if you're a plumber. And we're definitely going to need a new gasket there. We might have to order some gaskets. Luckily, anyway, we have a whole set. I don't know if those are the right ones. We'll have to clean it up. Anyway, let's talk about how it works. With some little carburetor stories in between. Maybe. So here's the deal. Fuel line comes into this. Yep, and it has this. It has a filter. Inline fuel filter. Should have a filter. It doesn't need one. But yeah, I like having filters on it because I sometimes you get bad gas and that'll really mess up a carburetor. So I like to have a fuel filter. Dad likes the inlines because if you have a bike that's been sitting for 20 years, you're going to want a filter. Yeah, because the it might be a lot of dirt in the tank. Yep. So there's two butterflies. We've talked about this one already. That's the choke butterfly, right? If the filter leaks, you're going to be covered in diesel. So that's the choke butterfly. And this back here is the main butterfly. See that? Yep. Doesn't seem like it wants to open all the way. What are we hitting? Oh, what's that? Okay, I guess that's as far as it goes. It's hitting right here. I think there should be an adjustment screw there or something. I mean, we'll, we'll talk about it. So, yep. first thing that happens, gas comes in this nozzle and ends up in here. Yep, right? and then the float comes up and, and hits a valve so no more gas can come in. So let's get this float bowl off. We'll just show you how about that. We'll get this float bowl off. 
and we had knew that worked because it would idle, right? It wasn't running out of gas. So we know that that used to work, and this carburetor had been on there for and several months. And it also months. wasn't spilling gas all over the floor as if the float was stuck. You know, this hadn't been on there for several months, so we'll check it. And this has an accelerator valve. That's what this rod right here is on yeah. that thing. It's a little, little diaphragm. So there's three screws here, but only one holds the float ball on. So if you look carefully, you'll see that that screw only goes to here. Yeah. That only goes there, but look at that one. All the way through, right? Yeah. So this one holds the float ball on. And so we need to get it loose. If you guys are wondering how we keep the bike running, we've got an S and S on it right now. They yeah. seem like they should work, but they actually don't work that it good. It doesn't work much better, does it? Yeah. I think it's too much carburetor for that bike. All right. I also so this, think it's getting too much back pressure. This one here, this is a rod, and that runs that diaphragm pump, but this rod will fall out, so you've got to be very careful. So we need to take it out of there, and it goes in a hole. You can't hardly see it, but it goes in a hole back there on the back of this little plastic thing. But if we don't take it out, it'll fall out, and then we won't know where it goes, right? All right, so here's our float bowl, and here's our float. Yeah. <coughs> On old Briggs and Stratton engines, you'll find that those are brass. Sometimes. The old ones used to have cork. Yeah. Or cork. So what happens is, the gas goes in, fills up this bowl, and when the bowl gets full, it lifts this float right here. I don't have to turn upside down. And what happens is it lifts this float like this, and it closes this little valve right there, that float valve. You can just almost see it. Let's see if I got something to point with here. Right here, there's a float valve in there, yeah. and that seals up the opening on the other side of this pipe so no more gas can come in. And then when it uses the gas, it'll let it go and it open it up again, and it's just like an automatic closing valve. So when it yeah. needs gas, it opens up. When it's full, it doesn't. So pretty nifty. Our old chicken coop watering thing used to work like that. It did that. have a float like that, right? Yeah, you'd fill it up and then it, and then when the chickens drank too much, it would fill it back up again. So we're going to make sure we don't lose any of our screws. We'll put them over here on the bench. I probably ought to have a tray to put them in. I don't think I have any in here, though. Set them all up here for now. And then our float will come out. And here's that valve I was telling you about. See that little float valve? Yeah. It's a little needle valve. And what it does, it seals up into this hole right there. And when it closes up, it Closes up like a plug, like a bath drain plug, like a yep. bathtub does. Closes up just like that. So these sometimes will cause you trouble. They won't work all the way, but this one doesn't look dirty. Sometimes you'll see it torn, or they'll be rounded and not good, but that one looks pretty good. On the Polaris, there's just one piece of dirt stopping us. We yeah. had a rebuild kit, but it was too big, and I was like, are you kidding? So all that, that for one piece of dirt. That looks good. This gasket's a pain in the butt here. See this gasket don't want to stay? Yeah. This is a hard gasket to get on there, but we'll get it when we get put it back together. We'll worry about yeah. that. So that's all we really need to take apart in here. There is a diaphragm in here for the yeah. accelerator pump, but that's not our problem, right? So we'll trust that that's in there for now. We can take it out and look at it later. What's not happening? When this runs, you accelerate like this, right? Yeah. So when we accelerate, it goes brom, except for it won't. It only runs on the choke when this is open. So what's happening is it's not getting gas. And the way this works, let me see if I can draw you a picture. My bad drawing, right? Oh, no. I know. Terrible drawing. So what happens is you have this side would be the air intake, right? Yeah. So this is outside air. Right there. Outside air. Is that on camera? Yeah, close enough. It's not legible. But my handwriting is never legible, right? Yeah. And this would be the engine on this side of the carburetor. So what happens is, this carburetor, it looks like it's a straight through tube. So if you look at it, it looks like it's just a cylinder, right? Yeah. But it's not. What happens is, as this comes into the carburetor, it necks down. Like this. Yeah. And what happens is, when your air comes through here, it hits this neck down spot. And that creates a vacuum because it has to, the air has to squish, right? Yeah. So remember, your air has, your engine has compression, right? Yeah. So your engine compression sucks air in. That's how the air gets in the engine. It goes, right? Yeah. And when it does that, it forces air in here, and all the air right here is coming in here. All through here suddenly has to come through this tiny little spot. And that creates a little bit of suction. Yeah. So once that suction happens, the gas, because our float bowl will be down here, right? Yeah. That's our float bowl. That's where our gas comes in. And we got a little gas in that here, right? In gas. Oof, my handwriting is getting worse. Gas in. So this fills up, and you have a level of gas in here. And what happens is there's a tube right here in the middle. 
and what happens? When that air comes through there, it creates a little bit of suction, and then the gas gets sucked up into and it. And it gets sucked up this tube, and you go spurt, 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 like a little spray. And then it mixes right here, and it goes into the engine. Yep. So since ours is running, it's getting gas, but it's not running when we hit the throttle. It only runs when the choke's on. And what that tells me is that it's not getting enough gas. It's running out of gas, right? Yep. So when this runs with the choke closed, it's running idle. It'll go blah, 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 blah. But as soon as I hit the throttle or turn the choke off, it goes Pleh. And that means something here is not getting gas in. So gas is not getting from here up into there correctly. And there's a couple other things that could cause this. So one of the things that could be a problem is we have the wrong exhaust on the bike. So yeah. it could be it's the wrong size jet. Because if there's too much back pressure, it probably won't run. Because remember how I had those straight pipes? If not enough back pressure will cause it too, right? And that yeah. changes how much the engine works, how the engine works. So it might not have the right pipes on it. But I don't think that's a problem. I think we're clogged up one of these jets. So there's two of them in here. So you have this jet, the little tiny one. Yeah. That's your, just your secondary jet. I think this is the primary jet here. I, there, I don't know the terms, but so one of these, these, these are little holes. They're drilled in there really carefully, yeah. and those go right up into here, and you can kind of see them sticking through there. If you look really carefully, see that little brass thing sticking up? See, I'll show you, and then I'll see if I can get yeah. it camera. So right in here, I need a pointer. That little brass thing right there, that's where that gas gets sucked up into there and gets shoved through into the into the engine. And there's two of those, so there's a hole here too. You probably can't see on this side very good, but it'll be a much smaller hole on that side. So I think we're not getting gas. So let's look at those and take those apart and see if we can see if maybe they're not cleaned. Thanks for the screwdriver to hack them. So there's two pieces of this. This piece here sometimes will fall right out, sometimes it won't. In this case it won't. Yeah, it seems like it's pretty stuck. What we're looking for is here, you should be able to see light through that. See light through it? I can see light through it. Yeah. All right. And on top of here, we should have numbers. They're kind of scoped up a little bit, but there should be a number right there. And that's the jet size tells us how big the hole is in this. You know, I can't read what they say. It's 168 or 188. I can't tell. 169. I'd have to use the mic. Let me use the magnifier and see if we can tell you. 165, I think, is what it says. Oh. So one of the things we could do is we could order new jets in different sizes, and we could try to use a different jet and see if that would help. So that's one of the things we can do. But that's not clogged. And I can't see into the carburetor here. That should suck right through there. Yeah. See if we can get some light in there. Come on. Too many. There we go. I can't see light through there though. See that? So we should be able to blow air through there. And it does go through. But I can't see through it. Let's see if we can get that knocked out of there. I don't know if this, they're pressed in. Sometimes they're just balanced in there and sometimes they're pressed in. Yeah. I don't think these are pressed in, but we'll see. We can get it pop loose here. I wish this thing on the butterfly would stay open so I can see what I'm doing. This one might be pressed in. It doesn't seem like it wants to come loose, so I don't want to pry on it too much, right? Yeah. Does not seem to want to come loose. And then there's a secondary jet right here. See a little honey hole there? Yeah. Can't really see it. I'll have to get a smaller screwdriver for that even. We'll get a little tiny screwdriver in there and we'll see if we can get that one loose too. Shouldn't be that tight. I just barely need to be snug. Get that out of there. Okay. The same thing here. This should be through. You should be able to see light through it. None of the holes should be clogged on this side. See? See if there's any, can you see, well, you can hold it, see if, don't drop it though. See if there's any light visible through it. I can see light through it. And the same thing here, we should, be able to, we should be able to blow through this one. This one's all clear. So we got air through that too. So those are, should be getting air. They should be sucking up fuel, right? Yep. So there's a couple other things. There's a channel, see this tube right here? That's a little channel the air goes through and that could be clogged up. Yeah. But there's not a good way for us to clean that if it is. And that comes into this thing, so it sucks gas into here, 
those go either way and then it comes through here and spits out right here into the intake. Yep. So we can probably try to blow through that. I'll need a hose or something to connect to it though. And you can definitely test this one, right? And we definitely aren't getting air through that. I'm going to need to get this seat out. I need to get hooked onto there, but I don't think it'll work. You can hold it, you think? Probably not. I'm guessing probably not. Do I plan getting air through there, right? Yeah. This one here. We're getting no air through that. So I put this tube on here. And that goes into this main jet, right? Mm -hmm. So let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. Might need those brushes from the um, barn. Yeah. Alright, so this one here is not our problem. That one works. I think it's that one. Well, across the right, right? It's just brass. So this will strip out pretty easy. So we're going to just snug. We don't need to be too tight. I think that might be our issue there. We'll let's have to see if we can get this out of there. We might have to take the butterfly off here real quick so we can reach it better. Yep. Let's held on by this little clip. I don't know which side would be easier to get it off. That one, I guess. Maybe. Make sure we're not going to lose anything, springs or nothing. You don't want a whole bunch of spring of a thing going on if we take it apart, right? Yep. All right, we got tiny little screws there that hold that. That should let it go there, and we got this little clip, and we should be able to pull the choke out. So the choke works on these notches. See how it rolls those notches up? And we're in the top. Got to make sure it lines up with that all the way closed. So if we get it back in, we got to get in the right spot, right? Let's see if we can get this clip off of here. And then those little screws. I was stabbing myself. There we go. Get that off of there. And there's a washer off of here. Quit it. Roll around over. We usually do this on a tray. Let me see our tray. We do this on a tray. Yeah. And then that hell that washer is almost rolling away on me. And it can't roll off the table anymore, right? Yeah. Probably makes it harder to see on the camera, but we won't lose parts, and that's probably the most important part, right? All right, so take the butterfly off here. Notice this butterfly doesn't close all the way, right? Yeah. Because it would s close off all the air. On old tractors, they have a spring-loaded flapper door, which is kind of neat, that yep. keeps you from closing all the way off. That's kind of neat. I always thought that flapper door was kind of neat. When I had an old 8 in tractor, yep. it wouldn't run right, and it was because that flapper spring was missing. Mm -hmm. Someone put it all together without that spring, and I didn't know, because I never took the carburetor apart when I took the carburetor apart, I could see that there was that flapper is just hanging there closed and wasn't opening up the spring wasn't holding it closed. Um for four others it works that way too because on my tow towel there's a little spring loaded flap. Is there? Yep. Right in the choke door there's a little spring loaded flap. I didn't look that close. There probably is though. Because you can't close all the air off, it'll just kill it, right? Yeah. You're just trying to shut down most of the air and re reduce the amount of air coming out of it or through it. All right, butterfly off of here, screws there, that off of there. Probably could have a good cleaning anyway, right? Yeah. All right, now we gotta make sure we don't spring them a thing, a whole bunch of stuff. See the spring on here, right? Yeah. That hooks back here, and it hooks here. I don't know, maybe we should take the, well, it wants to take this part off, there it goes. All right, so this out of here, there we go. And now we can see that thing right there. That one right there? Yep. That's the one I kind of want to get and out also, of there. And there's a tiny hole in it. Where? Teeny tiny hole right there. Oh, that's that's the butterfly. Yeah. The auto butterfly. Yeah, yeah. So I'd like to get that out of there. Let's see if we can get something. Because I think it's blocking a hole in here and we need to get that clean. If we had an ultrasonic cleaner, we might be able to just, you know, let it sit for a couple of days and get it knocked Could loose. go to Harbor Freight and get one. I don't think I would do that today. I need a piece of wire and see if we can snake it through there. Probably too flimsy a wire here, but we're going to check and see if that hole's open in there. 
Dad's got just schools of that stuff. Yeah, I don't know who put these on the sewing machine bobbins. It was kind of stupid of them, but probably one of your granddads. I think it's most of the stuff come from his house. Yeah. The shop, so one of them decided to put on a sewing machine bobbin. That was kind of weird. I guess you might be able to sew with it. Yeah. All right, so that hole's open. I can see the wire come through. Yep. So that hole works. Some of this wire is green, too. Yeah, it's because it's insulated. This wire here. We might have to get us an ultrasonic cleaner anyway just to get this thing working again because I think it's stuck. I'm just kind of crudded up in there. Uh-huh. And that ain't going to do us no good. I wish I could see in there. I can see where it's supposed to go. I bet you that is our problem though. That should probably work a little better than that, right? Let's see here. Hey. I got something loose in it. Yeah. Uh, didn't do that before, right? Yeah. Better. I bet this little wire did it. Even though I couldn't feel anything. I bet it wished down, went down there and cleared it out. It needs to be clean or that air won't be able to suck that gas up. That little vacuum it makes. Yeah. I'm not thinking you get insulate wire this small. Yeah, it's just like a lacquer they put on it, like a paint. Mm -hmm. So it's not like the rubber elastic or rubber insulation you're thinking of. Mm -hmm. That's better, right? Yeah. All right, so we got stuff to move. That's something. I think we might need to brush this out of the barn. Yeah. Brush this out a little bit. Yeah. It's got a lot of gunk in it. All right, and we blew through that one right there, and it worked, right? Yeah. You could hear that one coming out. So that's the only one that's left, the one I just got loose. Yes. I bet that was our problem. We'll have to go get the brushes out of the barn real quick, and we'll brush it out. All right, so I got some brushes, specifically made for carburetors, right? So let's go in there. Or so the company says. Well, they're nylon brushes, right? So we'll go in here, and we can clean all that gunk I was looking at in there, right? Yeah. It should come all the way through. Like that. Clean that all out because that's where the gas is going to go, right? Yep. So that should clean that out. And these, we had this one cleared out. I'm going to spray some gunk through it. That's better than it was, though. It wasn't doing that before. Maybe we fixed her. You think it was that easy? Mm -hmm. They're pretty simple. Carburetors? Yeah. People act like they're really complicated, but they're kind of not. So all we're dealing with now move this out of my way here real quick. So we same thing I said here, this little air comes in and gets pressed, compressed, but what we're dealing with is there's two nozzles. So there's actually a different color I reckon. There's actually two nozzles and this one's actually farther, I think it's actually farther backwards, but anyway. It comes up here in two, so there's two nozzles and they're different sizes. So it, different vacuums will pull more fuel out of here and then more fuel out of there. Yeah. So it changes how much fuel can come up by the size of these. And what happens is when you accelerate, it might only be using one of these. Then as you accelerate the bike, it creates more vacuum, more engine compression, sucking in air, and then it opens, it starts sucking out of the bigger tubes too. Kind of like when you're using a soda straw, right? Yep. So if you're using a soda straw and you just barely suck over the top, yep. but if you put your mouth all the way on it, oh, right? Yep. So I think that's what's going on. And I think that one was clogged up. Yep. So we are going to flush it out. Don't get this stuff in your eyes. This stuff's awful. Okay. This stuff's yucky. Mm -hmm. All right, saw some water, some juice screwed out of it, right? Mm -hmm. That one comes out too. All right, I think we might have block knocked the blockage out. I think that might be our problem. Hopefully. Hopefully we knocked the block. Problem is, we'll have to put it back on and test it. You know. Yeah, it takes a long time to bolt the thing back on there. Oh well. This little plug here, all it does is go here. Yeah. And notice it fell out. So it doesn't really. I don't know what actually doesn't go there either. I don't know. We'll have to look and see where that goes. We'll think about it. All right. And should we mount it on here? We should probably. I don't know if I want to put it on. That that bike's hard to get under. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to move a bunch of stuff, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got partially apart. If we had an ultrasonic cleaner, we could do a better job. But instead of messing with that right now, let's just go ahead and put it back together. And then maybe we'll put it back on the bike. Trying to clean it off before we put it back in there, right? A little dirty. Ain't perfect. We could probably do a better job, but it's an old carburetor, right? It's a 1979 Sportster. So this carburetor has been around a while, right? Yeah. It is not by any means a new bike. All right. So this goes in here. Thusly. And this has to hook on here. Wind her up here. Get on her. There you go. There we go. Oh, got it wrong. See that? I got it wrong. We got to be able to put the butterfly on it. Somehow I'll go on her backwards. Can't go that way. Try the other way. And don't forget the gaskets. Try the other way. There we go. That's the way it goes. Yeah. We ain't ready for gaskets yet. We got to put this thing together. Don't forget that gasket you said you'd forget. Clean her all up. Okay. Push the spring washer back on it. Come on, get on her. Okay. Clumsy fingers. Not gonna work very good. Come on, be a pal. Put on there. There we go. Okay. So that should go there. And then this should open and close our butterfly. All right, let's clean this off too. You know, the weird thing is, we totally took this to a shop and they were supposed to have cleaned and tried to rebuild this carburetor. Does it look like they cleaned and rebuilt that carburetor? Nah. I think they looked at it briefly and then put that SNS on it because it was easier for them, even though it cost a lot more, right? Yeah. And it doesn't work very good. It doesn't work. It fouls out our spark plugs because it's too much carburetor, I think, for it. Sounds like a foul play to me. Get it? Yeah. Alright. There are lots of people who know a lot about carburetors. I ain't one of them. I know just about enough to get me in trouble, usually. They're probably walk people watching this video right now going, What in the heck is he doing? But, I have managed to make stuff run before, right? Yep. long winded screws for such a small part, you know what? I guess it does vibrate a lot. Maybe they didn't want to vibrate loose. Seems like those screws are awful long-winded. I am not the first person that's been in this carburetor. Probably, I mean, you know, 1979 sports. I bet a lot of people have been in this carburetor. What do you think? Yeah. Over the years? Over the years. Lots of people have had to mess with this, I bet. Anyway, we'll get this in here. And then we'll go find time later. Put the thing on the bike and then see if we can make her go. All right, so boat butterfly works. See, open, close, open, close, open, close. Maybe we'll have to do this with all 400 carburetors on JJ's bike. I kind of really hope I don't have to do it on that, that 750 yep. Honda. Because that will be a real pain in the butt. But we may. Okay. All right. I think we're all square then. I don't know where that goes, but let's make sure it's cleaned out. Fluid comes out. Must be good, right? Yep. Okay. All right, let's put our float back in. Clean that out too, might as well, right? Yep. Sure no gunk in that either. All right, so remember this float valve. That has to go inside here. Kind of tight on that clamp. Guess it's all right, but it's kind of tight. Oops, pin fell up. You have the original one in here still, or we get rid of it? There's the original one. These are the original parts of this carburetor after I rebuilt it last time. Mm -hmm. 
because I couldn't get to work. I'm pretty well clogged up right there. It should move, but it does not. This one doesn't look like it even has that movie bit, but no. All right, let's put her in here. Well, that goes there. That's in there like that. And this little tiny screw here holds the float. Quit it. Wah. Wah. Get in there. Okay. Make sure our float works. A little stiff, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's coming loose. Well, the first time I moved it, it seemed like it was going to stick. Well, uh, the floor is covering gas overall. Yeah, that's what happens when that sticks, right? It just keeps overflowing, and there's an overflow tube here on the float bowl. You yeah. see this? You really wish it wasn't there when it sticks. Right there, that one that sticks up in the middle. Yep. This is the overflow tube, so if that float stops working just stays open the fuel will fill this bowl up and it'll get over this little tube and then it'll drain out here and there's a hose that goes on there so it doesn't drain on your engine and then you'll know that thing is all clogged up right yep it'll run like that won't it it'll run but it'll just keep puking gas everywhere you don't want that yeah it will run we have this one tube here still too in this float bowl that goes to this accelerator valve we might yep. have to might want to look at that too let's get this back together before we forget all the parts though okay so the float works. It's starting to loosen up. I think that pin was I had a bad spot on it. Crusty spot. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Another curve, other really one. And this is this jet looks okay. I don't. I guess I could look up what carburetor this is and try to get new jets for it. Rejet it. Yeah. If it still causes us trouble. Yeah. I have to do some research on it though. Have to do a little research on it. We have a second one here. See this one? Yeah. It's almost the same. If you look at them, they're pretty close. Yeah. Almost the same. So it's got a different, the fuel valve here is busted off. We need a new nozzle there. Yeah. And look at this, it's got two hoses. So all modern bikes have to have for your, or for your cables, your throttle cable, mm -hmm. it's two cables, a pull and a push. That way it won't get stuck. This one didn't have that back in the day, so not a huge deal. But we have some extra parts here if we need it. I thought about putting this one on, but it's got some extra features that we don't have on our bike, so mm. I don't want to troubleshoot And that. it isn't glued. So yeah, I didn't think, I did think about it, but it's got a few extra issues that we didn't want to, I don't want to mess with, so I did think about just trying that one. All right, so let's set that aside. And let's see if we can get, make sure these are all cleaned out. See this little hole here? Yep. This goes into this diaphragm pump, and there's a little diaphragm in here. Make sure all those are clear. Not clogged up. Yep. This is the accelerator, so when you push the throttle, it pushes this and sucks more gas in. Yep. So. Okay. So there's always O-rings in here. See there's two O-rings. You got O-ring there and O-ring there. You yep. don't want to mess around and not put those in there. Get those lost, it'll never work right. So make sure those are in. And our diaphragm works, it's not broken. And I diaphragm did diaphragm. That's kind of popping off, but all it is is just a spring, see? Just a spring. Come on, man. Don't be dropping my parts. Okay, that went right straight through, right here. Yeah. See the spray on my finger? Yeah. So that's not clogged. That ain't clogged. That one's not drilled through, I don't think. That one there? It might be, I don't know. Spray some stuff through it too. Don't lose my spray now. Uh, my, my spray nozzle hose came off. Yeah, yeah don't, get, don't get sprayed in the eyes. Oh, we look. 
That's clear too. All right, so we're all clear. Maybe it's just that one clogged up spot causing us the trouble. What do you think? Yep. Be pretty cool. That would good be cool, yep. All right. This has to go in here. Dustly. This has to go in here. Then we'll finally have it return to stock. Yeah, well, I'd like to find the exhaust for it someday, too, but that's a really hard exhaust With the to find. original problems, too. Mm. Yeah, the original exhaust is almost hard possible. Well, I don't think it's possible, but they're very expensive, and I don't know if I want to put that much money in that bike. I already have too much money in that bike to begin with. And I don't even like it that much, right? Uh-huh. I think when I put a bunch of money in a motorcycle, it should be one I like. It's all right, just not my style, not for me. I think you'll like JD's bike. Think I like the Honda better? Yeah. I don't know. It's still too big, I think. I don't ride on highways or nothing. I just ride in town, back and forth to work and whatnot. I don't really need a very big engine. I still kind of think we should keep it to be nice to Mom's friends. Okay, here we go. All right, so this gasket here always wants to roll out. We don't have an extra because I think the extra one went bad. Yeah. yeah, that's the wrong size. All right, so the hard part here is keeping this gasket down here yeah. while we bolt it together. See, it keeps wanting to roll out of that groove. Yeah. That is the hard part. Every time I've worked on this carburetor, it's been the same problem. Getting that to work. Get it to stay. You overstretch it and it goes the other way though. Nope, need that rod still. Remember I told you it was a rod? Yeah. Just about forgot to put it on there, bud. This hole's hard to find. Can't see it very good. I just have to kind of know it's there. I thought some other brand made this carb. It's actually a Harley. Well, I think it's a different. They don't make the carburetors, but they... They buy them and have them labeled as their own, with their own trademark. Yeah. I don't think Har Harley actually builds the carburetors or manufactures them. I think they just buy them, but they, they are usually labeled as Harley-Davidson carburetors. And my gasket moved on me again. This gasket. These gaskets are a pain in the butt. Been nice to have a paper gasket instead. I guess it would have leaked then, right? Yeah. All right, I think we got her. I think that gasket's in there. Can't tell. Of course, can't see it. Yeah, looks like it's closing all the way, right? Yeah. All right, put screws back in it. We'll know if it leaks, right? Yeah. So I gotta clean this all off. Let me get a razor blade and we'll see if we can clean this gasket off. I need a gasket out of there though. Don't, don't take my gasket yet. Okay, put it away. Uh, well, I just wanted to put all the stuff in here. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is the right gasket there or not because you tore the one. I think we got them all. So um, the box, here it is. Can you slide that in there so it holds all the parts together? Yeah. Let me find a razor blade. See if we can get this gasket off, because I think one of these will work as a new gasket. And then we'll clean this one off and replace that gasket, and I think that might work on the other side. Clean, clean, clean. Yeah, that gasket will work there, right? So we got gaskets, unless that one, no, it didn't stuck, stick to the earth. We broke it. There it is. We tore it, right? Mm -hmm. All right. I don't know why they caulk this. Well, I know why, but it wasn't the problem, right? People are always trying to fix the problems that don't need to be fixed. Well, I think the annoying part is it was a real motorcycle shop too, right? Yeah. Like, they should know more about this crap than I do. But instead, you knew more than them. I'm a mediocre mechanic at best, right? Those guys should have really known what they were doing. Instead, I think they just wanted to put the new carburetor on it and not have to mess with it. But the new carburetor doesn't work either. In fact, it worked just a little bit worse. Uh, well, it runs. It can accelerate. But it, you get about two hours of riding and then it fouls out the spark plug. Runs a little too rich. And I tried to take change the jets in it, and it didn't help. 
a smaller jet makes it not run good at all. And a bigger jet also makes it not run good. I think it's just the carburetor is too big for that. And I think the, we changed the exhaust on this bike too. That might help a lot. Get rid of those drag pipes. Put a real muffler on it, get some back pressure, it might help a bunch. Could be there's something still wrong with the engine too. Could be just getting oil filed or something. Maybe it's got a leak in the head gasket or something. Yeah. But we'll have to worry about that later. We'll try what we can do right now. Get it all lined up and then sell it. I don't really like this bike. I think I like the Sprint better. Get out of there. I bet they put this caulk on here yeah. because I think when I remember when I was installing this last time, yeah. you have to hold everything just right and it's hard to get under that gas tank and, and put all the stuff on there. So I bet they did this so that the gaskets wouldn't fall off when they were trying to install the carburetor. Which makes it hard for the next guy. Well, which is us. In theory, though, it'll just be on there for a long time. Years, right? Yeah. It won't matter. But instead, you gotta take it right back off again. Yeah, it didn't work very good, did it? But now I think we might have fixed it. Hopefully. That one, All that these one, years and it was a piece of dirt. That one was clogged, right? That one line was clogged. That might have been it. There, Like I said, this, this vacuum thing that creates... It's pretty finicky. It's simple. But it can be pretty finicky. After all these years. Alright, we got that clean. We only take one of these gaskets here. When we put it on. Yeah. Bolt that on there. Woohoo. Probably I get some sandpaper and smooth that a little bit, but it's not too bad. It probably looks worse on camera than it actually is. Just got a little of that glue left on it. I'm gonna scratch through that makes it look like I'm scratching all up, but I'm not scratching aluminum. I promise. Just <sighs> clean spots. Oh, Mr. Original Peoples. There's clean spots on it. Got a burr there. All right. So this we can definitely put the air cleaner back on, right? Yep, yeah, this thing's clogged up too. Then you may do the honors of starting this the gasket. Up. This gasket's not as bad, not as important as the other one. Yep. The other one blocks off the air to this intake. You don't want any leaks in here. Yeah. This one just connects it to that air cleaner and keeps dirt and stuff out. All right, make sure the bullet bowl's still working, right? Gas going in. I'll yeah. probably use a hose to make this easier, couldn't I? Do you think? Yeah. Smart people would use a hose. Maybe. And the air is the gas going in. Yep. That would be check, checking to make sure the float works. That's what I'm doing. As I'm putting in pressure. Yep. I think our filter might be clogged though. It doesn't seem like it wants to go in there very good. Let's yeah, go try this again. So what I'm doing, when it's this way, that float's just hanging there, right? Until the gas kicks it up. But if I turn it upside down, the float closes. Works just fine. Yeah. All right, so we're set to go there. Get off there. All right, let's get the air cleaner on it. Arrgh. There it is. Where the hell, where's the gasket I just had to go? All right, this has this bracket on it, and this bracket hooks to the, the engine, so the carburetor, because the carburetor is hanging out there on this engine, right? Yeah. We don't want to do that, so it, that holds it. Maybe secretly this engine has another carb on it. It does not. Just has the one. Like a super secret carb. Super secret carb? Yeah. Alright, so we need that. No one knows and it's out around there. There we go. These Allen bolts. Alright, so one of these, there's four holes, but only three of them get bolts. The other one's an error. Yeah. Probably need some washers back there, but that's the way it came apart, right? Probably could use a washer back there and behind these bolts. Literally just a bunch of screens and foam. That's all the filter is, right? 
couple screens and some foam. And not even clogged, because how could it get clogged? All right, Snuggie's up. I'm going to vibrate now. Don't want him to vibrate out. Okay, there's that part. All right, I don't like I don't like this filter particularly, but I mean it still looks like it's in halfway good shape. But it's really kind of a pain in the butt to get on. These holes have to go through here, and this one back here you have to get the nut on it, but you can hardly just almost not even see the thing. The, car, the air cleaner makes the car look bigger than it really is. Yeah. Well, they make different styles, too. So a lot of people spend a lot of money and time on their air cleaners. What's going on here? That's the wrong size bolt. I must have lost the original one. No way! Not on this bike, right? What do we do with that wrench we had? That's the problem with these old motorcycles. People have been into them a million times already. You're always fixing someone else's stuff, right? Always work on something someone else has already kind of messed with. Since the guy before us cracked it. Yeah, the guy had, we got it from wrecked it. And that's why it has different exhaust on it. He just went for drag pipes and the factory exhaust got wrecked. Which is a shame. It's probably work a lot better with the factory exhaust. All right, you got one more thing to clean up. That mess. Oh, that's gonna be a nightmare. I don't think it'll be that bad. They did glue it pretty good though, didn't they? Count Dracula's carburetor nightmare. They did glue it pretty good. Good done without all that glue. You don't want it to leak, but that cardboard should be just fine. Once it's tight. I think they thought it was leaking. That's more of a problem for a two-stroke bike than a four-stroke, though. I think it's still bad. If it leaked, it would not get the correct mixture, but I don't think it was leaking. You can check for leaks. You know how to check them when this, this thing, the gasket's leaking there? How do you check them? You spray some of that carburetor cleaner on when it's running, and it'll change the way it runs if it's getting, because it'll suck. Air comes in through here, right? Yeah. And this should be sealed once this is on there. Mm -hmm. So if you spray carburetor cleaner around here yeah. and it starts to accelerate, then it's sucking air from around here instead of through there. So you can kind of test it. And they should have been able to do that before gooping this thing all up, right? Yeah. But they did not, they did have the bike, didn't they? Yeah. They should have been able to do that without gooping this thing up before they gummed everything up here. They should have been able to just spray a little cleaner in there and know that it was leaking or not leaking and then moved on to another part. I'm starting to lose my faith in this motorcycle shop. Don't take your Bearcat there. Uh, we're going to fix the Bearcat herself. Alright. So that's all clear and clean. Put the gasket on it. Look, high quality gasket it says on it. High uh, quality. Yeah, I, mean, I guess it's high quality. I don't know. I don't know what that I means. It's, you know, it's cardboard. It's a special kind of cardboard to be fair. All right. Cardboard is cardboard. I don't think this matters which side is up, but we'll put the numbers up in case we need to read it later. You can't read the goop, though. All right. And then these washers on it. On it. We might have to take this back off to install it because sometimes it's easier to install this without the carburetor on it and then install the carburetor this. Well, let's see. I think last time I did it, I, I installed this breather first intake and then I put the carburetor on. So we might still have to take this back apart, but we'll just snug it up so we don't lose our parts and the gasket will be there, right? This bike also has a manual choke. This carburetor, the SNS has a starting valve. This one has a manual choke. So when we reinstall it, we'll have to put our choke back on. And our choke goes right here. Remember we were playing with this choke valve? Yeah. Our choke goes right here. So we'll have to hook our choke up, back on it, so we can pull our choke through. 
No worries, right? Yeah. So we'll have to hook the choke back up. But I think I might need to get a choke lever. This one looks kind of... I don't remember if I have the housing still on the bike or if it came off. We may have to get another choke. Anyway, there we go. We are ready to find time to put it back on the motorcycle. I think this filter is clogged. Oh, look at this. Look at that dirt in there. That's a, that's a problem. One of them. I can't believe they didn't. Yeah, big clog of dirt in there. Fail. I don't know what they were doing, bud. That ain't going to work. All right. Put this gasket back in with these rest of them in case we need it later, right? Maybe if I can get it open. Slide this gasket in here in case we need it later. I don't know what they were doing, bud. Epic fail. Uh. I think when I talked to the guy, he did say his real mechanic had um, quit and moved to Florida. Yeah. So maybe his mechanic wasn't there. <laughs> Which means this carburetor, epic fail. Like I said, epic fail. Maybe his mechanic wasn't there. Maybe that's the deal. All right. So I think we got her. Maybe cleaned up. And this might be the first video that isn't useless because the rest of you are probably going to have this problem too. Maybe. Carburetors aren't that complicated though, right? Yep. So we just have this tube. Got dirt all over it now. We just got this tube and, and the it. engine sucks air in. And when the engine sucks air in this way, yeah, I put an arrow there. The engine sucks air in this way. All it does is compress it. So when the air comes through that tube, it goes. But it's going to run a gas because you got no tank. Yeah. And then when it makes that vacuum, it sucks air up through these tubes and you control how much gas it gets by changing the size of this tube. Remember that jet? Yeah. That hole changes how much gas is allowed to come up. So we got a little tiny bit of gas there, but if we put a bigger jet in it, we could have a lot of gas going in. But it might not run good that way, right? So that's all it does. I'm tank. Okay, tank. Badly drawn tank. Well, you got a problem here, though. You see your problem? Yeah. What's the problem? Nah, it's got to be gravity fed. It's gravity fed, right? So if we're going to have this gas tank. The gas tank has to be up here because it's gravity fed. Yeah. And that wouldn't do no good. Gravity fed tank. So all the gas comes down through this line into the float, and then it makes it go, right? And then there's an easy little petcock. Oh, yeah, you got a petcock so you can turn the gas off. A lot of people don't use those, but I like to turn my gas off so that it doesn't just sit there and... I've had a lot of bikes just sit there and by the time you get back out where you were going, the things just puke gas everywhere. You don't know when that valve's going to stick, right? Alright. Put back together. Put the hose on top of the lid. Like none ever happened. Yeah, I like these lids. They used to not have those. You always had to like tape it there and you'd use the straw, but they make the lids to hold the straw. Awesome. Now it looks like no one ever messed in the car, but only it'll work. Well, it's probably not an exciting video, but maybe someone will be able to figure out how the carburetor works, right? There's videos um online I watched on YouTube. Someone made a, a plastic one. I don't remember which one it was. Who it was. Maybe it was um, Smarter Every Day. Yeah. He, he made a plexiglass carburetor where you could actually see it sucking in the air. Cool. It was pretty cool. That would be something for people to look at if they if they need a better description than my crappy drawing, right? Yeah. All right, we'll take us all back out to the barn. I'm going to see how unlevel our crappy bench is. Well, I didn't level the bench, so it's probably a pretty bunch. Hey, it's kind of level this direction. Yeah. All right, we done making this video? Yeah.